Welcome to Play to Win, where we play to win. I'm Dylan. And I'm Cam. This week, we're joined by the Defiant Cathar, L herself, to play some CEDH. Hello, I am Eliana, aka L, aka Defiant Cathar, uh, here, there, everyone on the internet that matters, and a couple places that don't play Legacy and EDH online and in real life. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. This video is brought to you in part by Dragon Shield. Use code play to win 5 at the affiliate link down below for 5% off to help support the show. And check us out on Patreon to help support us directly and get awesome extra perks. So we have Cam on Nadu, the commander Watsi forgot to test. L on Elevir, one year hence. Nate's playing Sisse, I'm the captain now, and I'm playing a Traxa food chain. <laughs> I think this is probably very risky, but keepable in a sense. Good luck. Have fun. Thanks for being here. I have a pregame. I have a pregame. Yours is before oh, mine, God. I think. Do I have a gemstone cavern? Get rid of Gilda Drake. I also have a gemstone cavern, and I'll get rid of Veil of Summer. Now can I go, finally? You can, yeah, you can take your first <laughs> turn of the game now if you want. <laughs> All right, here we go. We'll get a draw. Never didn't have it. Okay, let's play Manamo. Dun, 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 dun. A Lotus Petal. Do, 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 do. An Acromox. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, I love that. We're going to pitch this Pact of Negation. And, uh, well, let's just get him out on turn one. Nah, do. I will pass the turn. All right, I'll draw. I'm going to start off pretty simply. I'm just going to go planes into an attempt at deafening silence. Um, yeah, I'll be OK. I pass. Okay. That is all I'm going to do for now. I'm going to pass my turn at that. All right, I'm I will draw. I'm going to cast a Delighted Halfling, and I'll play a Wood of Foothills as my land for turn. I'll pass. Draw card. Misty Rainforest. Track it. Underground Sea. Cast Arcane Signet. That's it. Pass turn. All right, I'll get a draw. Cradle. Hmm, I think I know what Nate has. Let's test my theory. Let's cast a uh, Shunko. I'm gonna crack my wood of foothills. Get a trap on. Yep, we'll mantle this stuff. I kind of <laughs> knew you had it, but what else was I going to do? Yeah, having Shunko here in my opener with a turn one Nadu was great, but I did kind of sense that Nate had something to deal with it, so now I just need to find a way to get it back. Yeah, that pause in the deafening silence when Nate went, hmm, yeah, I guess it's okay. Kind of reveals that he's got something, and the only real thing that you're using to counter a deafening silence this early is like a misstep, because you don't want to free pitch a spell. You don't want to two for one yourself or something like that. So that makes sense. And you definitely still have to go for it, right? It's like... What it's, am I going to do? It's like the whole goal of your deck. Like, if he has it, he has it. If he doesn't have it, you probably, like, win the game. So. Maybe he was bluffing. Yeah, yeah I think I think it's worth it. Nate, I'm going to come at you in the air for three. For revenge! 36. Yeah, who says there's no spite plays in CPH? <laughs> Pass the turn. I will untap up, keep draw. I'm going to play a Muta Vault as my land for turn. And I'm actually just going to ship it there. Untap up, keep, I will draw. Cast Cutsil. Just in case. I'm just going to flash in an Archivist of Akma. Good by me. Yeah, me too. Cutsil's good. I will pass the turn. Untap, upkeep, draw card, tropical islands, cast the one ring. I am protection. I'll pass turn. Nice. I'll draw. Uh, hell yeah. Thanks, Dylan. Pay two for Phyrexian Metamorph. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll just activate the one ring just to get some more information before I pass. I say nothing. Yep, you got a one ring. ETB, I have protection because that's how that works. Yeah, I'm going to get a little bit more info too. Get a draw. Pass the turn. Alrighty. Oh, I should have attacked. I'm stupid. Tap key. I'm going to play a Gradle as my land for turn. You two have protection from everything, and I don't have any attacks on Nate, so I'm probably just going to go ahead and ship the turn from there. That sounds good. Untap, upkeep, I will draw. I'm going to cast Deathrite Shaman. I'm going to cast Arcane Signet. You can go. Untap, upkeep, take a damage from the One Ring, go to 38. Draw for turn. Tap the One Ring, put a counter on it, and draw two cards. Seems good. Cast Delighted Halfling, cast Ristic Study. I'm going to get this in before I have to pay extra for it. It's not going to do anything about the Ristic Study. It's just going to be a spell that I want to cast before the Ristic Study forces me to pay extra for it. It's a Hushwing Griff. Yep. Wonderful. Cool. I will pass my turn. All right, I'll lose one of my upkeep to going down to 37, thanks to my Phyrexian One Ring, and draw a card. Let's draw two cards here with the One Ring. What a poop satchel. Okay. I can play as many creatures as I want. Cast a Scoot Swarm. Ooh. Ooh. Warning, warning. I have a Ristic Study trigger. May I draw? Yeah. Draw card. I pass. I will cast a Sea King's Blessing, targeting both of my creatures. Two Nadu triggers that will happen after I don't pay for this Ristic Study. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'll draw for this Ristic Study. I'll start with the trigger from the Scoot Swarm. I reveal a Sylvan Safekeeper, so that will go to my hand. And then the Nadu one will trigger, and we will reveal Elvish Mystic, and that will go to my hand, too. Well, that was a very unfortunate set of flips. Combat, let's go to Nate. Yes. 
33. And I will pass the turn. Untap, upkeep, draw. I'm gonna shock in a temple garden, going down to 38. I'm gonna tap Gaia's Cradle for two green, cast a Satessin Champion. Mystic Study Trigger. You may draw. Not happy about it, but you can. Cast a Kenris Transformation, targeting the Scoop Swarm. Ooh, trigger, not a new trigger. <laughs> yep. Because um, for some reason, this isn't just abilities and shit that I control. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so my Naju trigger reveals a Lotus Cobra, which will go to my hand. I also have a Ristic Study trigger on it. You may draw. I have no ability to pay for it. A card. I have nothing to say about that. I have a 3-3 three, three Elk. The Satessin Champion will get a plus one encounter, and I'll draw a card. Do you also draw off Kenneth's Transformation? Yes, yes, I do. I'm going to move to combat, Dylan. Four damage over at you. Two of it's in the air. No effects. I'll take four. Go to 34. Pass my turn. That's it. I'll keep. I will draw. I'm going to cast this say. Ristic Study trigger. You may draw. Nice. A second main, I'm going to cast Chroma. Rocks. Trigger Ristic Study. You can draw. Imprinting Force of Will, and I will pass the trip. Oh, okay. Oh, strange. Cool. Send, send in a single. What is, <laughs> yeah, what is in your hand that is better than Force of it's, it's a little, that's a little scary, yeah. <laughs> Nate may have very few cards in his hand. I think only one at this point, but from the looks of his board, I am the most afraid of him, even more so than Nader right now, because he's got the protection. He's got the thing that does not allow for people to cast spells on his turn, the Cutsel. And not only that, Sissy doesn't need to really cast any spells. All Sissy needs is enough mana I mean, I guess a Dockside here would be nice, but Sissi can win with just activations from so little. Untap, upkeep, ring, I will take two, go to 32, and draw for my turn. Mana Confluence as my land for turn. I'm gonna cast Chain of Vapor targeting Deafening Silence. Pass priority on Chain of Vapor. Would you like to copy? No. <laughs> cool, cast Mana Vault, cast Talisman of Dominance. Cast Smothering Tithe, Smothering Tithe is okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay is a strong <laughs> word. I got seven in hand, I'm gonna pass turn after that. That's pretty solid. It's just a value turn, it's just a value Value turn. Getting rid of the deafening silence right before Cameron takes his turn is a little bit scary, but if I can have this many engines out in play at one time, I feel like it's gonna be difficult for me to lose. Yeah, the Smothering Tithe changes things when I have a one ring in play for sure. Smothering Tithe, when you draw, take it. Nice, I have a treasure. I think I'm only making two green with this cradle to cast Lotus Cobra. Trigger Ristic Study, you can have this one. I'll draw from this Ristic. Play Urza Saga as my land. Trigger Cobra, make another green. It has a Urza Saga counter on it. Use one one on Sylvan Safekeeper, pay for this realistic study. I'm gonna draw three cards. Yeah, I have three Smothering Tithe triggers. Have them. Wow, that's four treasures. Sacrifice Urza Saga to Sylvan Safekeeper, targeting my 3-3, three, three, triggering its ability. We reveal Cyclonic Rift. All right, this, this sucks. I think what I have to do is I have to use my two blue lands here to untap Cradle. With Manamo. With Manamo, yes. Use this green on an Elvish Mystic, not paying for Ristic Study. I will draw a card with Ristic Study. I can sacrifice Adowara to Sylvan Safekeeper. I'm going to sacrifice Adowara to target the Lotus Cobra and hold okay. priority with that ability on the stack, sacrifice my other land to Sylvan Safekeeper to target Lotus Cobra again, giving me my two triggers from Nadu's ability. Nice little workaround. Nadu really only cares about actually being targeted. So while I have a shroud on the stack targeting something, it doesn't have shroud yet. So in response, I can try to give a trout again, and then I'll still get my triggers no matter what here. All Nadu cares about is if something is targeted, which is why stuff like that blue cantrip, what's that called, Sea King's, sea, sea King's Blessing? Why that card is so insane, because it's relatively, like, it's basically uncounterable, because what the actual spell does is nothing. The targeting is what you're after. And my first trigger is Worldly Tutor. My second trigger is a Command Tower, so that will go right into play, triggering Lotus Cobra to make me a blue mana. We're gonna make five green mana. Worldly Tutor. Ristic Study Trigger. You can have it. Oh, that's also gonna trigger Archivist of Ogma when you search. I'm gonna activate the One Ring and draw three cards. We're gonna find Eternal Witness. Then I will gain a life and draw a card. We'll make one treasure from Smothering Tithe. Go up to five. Oh, fuck. That's good to know. Do you remember the Hushwing Grip now? I do, yeah, I'm remembering <laughs> Hushwing Grip right now. <laughs> Let's make another blue mana. We crack Safekeeper targeting Elvish Mystic, and then in response, target it again with my other. Can you tell me what has Shroud now? These things have Shroud. I have two Nadu triggers. There's no lands in play right now, so I'm gonna take this opportunity, I'm gonna lose a life, go to 31, and I'm gonna cast Swords to Plowshare on Nadu right now. Yeah, I felt really smart about the double land sacrificing thing up until right now. Yeah, it does leave a window that I have the opportunity to cast Nadu. I still don't feel like I'm in a great position. You have the mana to just recast it again, but at least you have to spend that mana on recasting it, not on a whole bunch of other stuff that you're drawing. Trigger puts Eternal Witness into my hand. I think Nadu has to 
go away. So you'll gain three. First Nadu trigger, Tribute Mage goes to my hand. Second one is Seeker of the Skybreak. I feel very stopped here. Cool. Now we need to worry about Dylan. <laughs> yep. oh, no, 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 no. Don't look at me. Look at uh, look at Nate, right? Look at Nate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm worried about both of you, but I'm more so worried about the person who's drawn like 48 cards. I'm casting Nadu again for five mana. I have a Rhystic Study trigger. Not have it. Not have it. All right, oh, yeah. let's sculpt, discard, Psychrift, Neoform, Tribute Mage, and Seeker of the Skybreak. I love seeing Psychrift go away. Pass. Untap, upkeep, raw. Missed a uh, Smothering Tithe trigger here on L's draw. Play my own Sylvan Safekeeper. I'm gonna respond to this card, but I, uh, I'm just trying to figure out if I'm going to regret this if Nate untaps and slams a dock side. I, I can't, I tell, I'm telling you, I don't have a dock side. I'm gonna show me what's in your hand. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I don't care, I have a box diamond. I'm gonna, in response, I'm gonna abrupt decay the Hushwing Griff, lose a life with this, going down to 30 and pay a treasure, going down to four treasures in response to Sylvan Safekeeper. Yep, that happens. Yeah, then I'm gonna pass on Sylvan Safekeeper when it gets to me. So this is pretty risky because Nate needs ETBs to win the game. So the Hushwing Griff is stopping him, but it's also stopping me. All of my combos revolve around Thassa's Oracle or revolve around Food Chain finding Thassa's Oracle eventually or revolve around Endurance Loops or something like that. So I need this off the board. And as long as that Sylvan Safekeeper is there, I need like four removal spells in order to get it off the board. So I'm kind of banking on, I don't think Nate will have it. And, and so that I can make it to my turn and still be able to hopefully win the game. You're kind of forced to do this now anyway, because you can't do it on Nate's turn no matter what with Cutsel there. Right, so. and I want all the mana I got because you just sculpted a perfect seven, which means there's probably a counter spell or two in there. So I want to be able to have enough mana to protect from that. I'm gonna put a null rod on the stack. I'm gonna sacrifice two treasures for two green mana in response. I have a Rhystic Steady trigger also. You can draw a card. Draw a card. I'm gonna null rod then. Guy is cradle for three green, which should have been four green. Play uh, Kadama of the West Tree. Rhystic Steady Trigger. You got it. Draw. I'm gonna go to combat. I'm gonna use my green mana before you go to combat. I'm gonna channel this Besage you targeting Null Rod. Ah. <laughs> okay. This one I maybe could have waited on. This one I could have waited on. This one, yeah, this one I couldn't have waited. This, one, this is not a creature that has the option to have Shroud. You won't have access to your treasures though if this thing stays in place. So but I you're... will have access to my lands on my turn if I just wait oh, until my oh, turn yeah. and use the lands and then treasures are active again. Yeah. Okay, so I get a land with a basic land type. Savannah into play, untap. Deuce of Destiny Champion and Archivist of Ogma at Dylan. No effects, go to 26. When Satessin Champion does combat damage, I'll search my library for a basic land to put it into play. So let's go to planes. Then I'm gonna go post combat main phase. I'm gonna try and put that deafening silence back down. I have a Rhystic Study trigger on it. Unfortunately, I don't have mana to pay for it. That works with me. And I will uh, clean up my board state a bit and pass the turn. So I'm gonna go for your, your swords. We I'll take two. Yep. Untap. Upkeep. I will draw. Mothering Tithe trigger. You may have it. I'm going to cast Rocco X equals two. <laughs> Ooh. I have a Rhystic Study. Draw. That's fine with me. Yep. I'm good on it. Search my library for a two drop. Talk side. I can't believe that's the card that you drew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I deserve this. So obviously that bit me in the ass extremely because Nate drew the one card that allows him to do a lot here. I should have just waited. I just assumed he wouldn't draw anything. I wanted to have access to more of my mana. I should have just waited. I should have just waited. The Archivist of Agma will trigger. Okay. Does Dark Side trigger? I will respond to the trigger. I'll float blue, blue, black. Yeah, I have two. I have six. six. I've got two. Oh, you know what? I missed, uh, and that's it's my bad. I missed a draw off my uh, deafening mm. silence on my Satessin champion. So what's my number? Ten. I'm gonna sack five treasures to activate Sisse. So I got a meal. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna draw a bunch of cards. I think everything I draw requires to cast a spell. I'm gonna present a loop where I can create infinite treasures. Yeah, I just completely, oh man, I just served this to you on a silver platter too. <laughs> With my second one, I'm actually gonna get Urtai and destroy the Archivist so you can't draw a bunch yeah, of cards. My draws were Manglehorn and Marsh Flats and I don't think that's gonna do it. You get one more. Archon of Emeria, I don't think it's gonna do it. What's well, the fairy? I have to exile something. I will exile my Arcane Signet. I can activate my Planeswalkers twice. I will use Omnatu's ability to flicker Nicol Bolas, then Nicol Bolas is plus one. You will all exile everything. Just go get Sahili. Sahili is, I will subscribe one and deal one to each opponent. So I will deal one to each of you infinitely, flickering it with like Omnatu's ability and Nicol Bolas's plus two. Awesome. Nice, good game, Nate, very good. That was sweet. So Nate can do this because Oath of Teferi gives all of his Planeswalkers double activations and Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh gets all the activations of the other Planeswalkers too. So it can also blink things in play and it also has uh, the ability to draw a card or 
also Saheeli's ability then too. So between Amanatu and Nicol Bolas being able to flicker each other and flicker Saheeli, he'll be able to activate these Planeswalkers infinitely and take us out with damage that way. Yeah, I should have just waited on my removal spell. Either way, great win to Nate. Sisse is a fantastic deck that can win with very few things. Dockside isn't the only out, obviously. Every single tutor that finds Dockside isn't out. I should have just assumed worst case scenario, he's gonna find the Dockside and I should play around that over, you know, just making sure that I can use my mana a little bit better to make sure that I can protect something later. So I do think Nadu is still a new tier one deck, but as we saw here, it's not gonna win 100% of games that it's played against. If you can deal with any of the zero mana equipments, that's gonna help. I think being able to stop Nadu's ability through cards like Dress Down, Final Showdown, and even like Drenith Magistrate, like classic, cards that we play in CEDH, we might just want to be revisiting more if we're going to be seeing this bird in more games. And I know we will be on this channel too. Yeah, we didn't see all of them yet, but stuff like Toxic Illusion Cyclonic Rift are also great ways that don't target the bird, but also slow you down and get rid of your stuff. There are options. We do have some, but Either way, this deck is very powerful and will continue to make a stay, even if it doesn't win all of its games. Still felt very resilient until you got rid of my Nadu at the right time. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Very Khan, Old and Groompy, Odd Cesarion, Gecko21, Caleb Ritchie, Caleb Ritchie, Zach Hartley, Kajo Alex, Sean in the Ice, Mark Cirillo, SoCal Acura, Stormageddon, Luke Cook, Demon of Rosgrees, Peter Stewart, Cornell Wild, Uncle Butts, Nick Foles, Go09, Kawaja A. Hamid, Lauren Connell, and Baby G Bus. If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Big thank you to Dragon Shield for supporting the show. Use code playtowin5 at our affiliate link down below to help support the show. If you want to follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, you can do that. Thanks for watching. See you next time. We talk about our $50 patrons. They are Mystic Muffin Man, Nick Saxby, Jacob Bauer, Big Mike, Willie Hattu, Tyler Watson, Brian Barrington, Zachary Kulshin, Tyler H, X Tyler the Tree X, Paul Pratt, Driving Gruner, Gabaha, Mace the Ace, Dalton Oti, Hello Ghost, Justin, Mansola, Pedro, Jacob Depp, Michael Below, Jan Wildfang, Thomas Bueno, and David Nelson. Thank you all. Now, don't, am I right? Heart sucks.